जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम सत श्री अकाल वनकम केम छो सली मेलू नमस्कार गम आदाब एंड अ वेरी वार्म ग्रीटिंग ऑफ द डे टू यू ऑल चंद्र की गीती का दली भाई सागा अबू बकर ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू इंग्लिश एज ब्रेकिंग टाइज इज अ रिमार्केबल नोवेल बिकॉज इट डील्स विद द लाइव्स ऑफ वुमेन हु लिव्स इन द फ्रंटियर्स ऑफ कर्नाटक एंड केरला I keep repeating this the insight and information we get from an insider of a specific community gives us a different paradigm a different narrative to the things that we have been seeing in and around in today's video we will be discussing these outlines a brief introduction of the author Sara Abu Bakr introducing the characters of the novel breaking ties a brief summary of the novel storyline themes and ideas that need to be discussed by the end of this video you will have a clear idea about what breaking ties is all about saga abubakar was born on 30th june 1936 she started writing quite late her first novel chandra giriya tira dalli it was published in the year 1981 the novel was initially published in a serialized form in a local monthly magazine lankesh patrike and it was later republished as a novel This novel was translated into English by Vanamala Vishwanathan in the year 1991 and the text that I am referring to the text that you refer as a part of your syllabus is the same the one which is translated by Vanamala Vishwanathan since the year 1994 Sara Abubakar published all her novels under her own publication titled Chandragiri Prakashan Her novels deals with the trial and tribulations in the lives of Muslims living in Karnataka and she is known for boldly writing about these difficulties and injustices faced by women in these situations if you are finding it difficult to lay your hands on the novel then i will be attaching a link of this book titled nadira okay which is actually breaking ties it is available on amazon kindly check it out and purchase a personal copy for yourself well nadira is a real life character okay Though this is a fictional novel the character Nadira is inspired from Sara Abu Bakr's maid okay Sara Abu Bakr had a maid and once she narrated her life story to Sara Abu Bakr and Sara Abu Bakr got inspired to write an entire novel on the life of her the entire story revolves around the life of Nadira Nadira was married to Rashid they led a very happy life but some consequences and some misunderstandings leads to their divorce rashid gives her the luck eventually the misconceptions get faded away and she thinks of remarrying rashid and in order to marry rashid she has to go through a tradition of marrying another person before uniting with her former husband what happens when nadira faces this humiliation of spending a night with some strange person that is where the climax is and that is where the entire story leads us into Let us look into the characters of Breaking Ties. Number one, Muhammad Khan, the villain of the story. He was a very cruel, short-tempered, and egoistic man. In his eyes, a woman was a creature without a heart, without feelings. She had to implicitly obey her father, husband, and then her sons. Fatima, the very feeble creature, the wife of Muhammad Khan. They have two daughters. Nadira the elder daughter and Jamila the younger daughter Nadira is married and she has a family her husband's name is Rashid Rashid's mother's name is Aminamma Rashid and uh, Nadira have a son and he's called as Papu throughout the novel Apart from these main characters there are some other characters as well Paru who is called as Palu by Nadira's son she is a fish selling woman who acts as a messenger between Rashid and Nadira Jainabi the neighbor of Aminamma who is the only person only female character in the novel who speaks of justice who speaks sense new house salim a name that you need to remember an old aged person who is married who has a lot of kids but still He is eager to marry a young girl. Jabbar, owner of the plantation farm. Khader, a very good friend of Muhammad Khan. Sheikh Ali, quite an old person with a fat tummy, a fat belly, bald hair, and quite disgusting to look at from the point of view of Nadira, because Sheikh Ali agrees to be the one day husband of Nadira. A brief summary of breaking ties. Leah Matthews in her paper titled Breaking Ties from a Subaltern 
point of view gives a crisp and short summary of the novel. Let me read it out for you. The novel is about the tragic story of a 14-year girl, Nadira. She is from a Muslim community and is uneducated. And she always obeys her father and does all the household chokes without complaining. And suddenly, she was married to a man named Rashid. This new life was somehow started very happily and continued for a year. And then the problem arises when Khan, her father, approached Rashid and asked for some money for his second daughter's marriage. But Rashid was unable to give the money. Furious by this incident, Khan took Nadira and her baby to his house without inquiring about his to her and without Rashid's knowledge. Later, when Rashid approached Khan to send his wife back to his house, Khan cunningly manipulated him to get talaq from him and lied about Nadira that she is not interested in living with him anymore. Later, Nadira realized that her father is responsible for breaking her ties, for breaking her relationship with Rashid. Then somehow both Nadira and Rashid contacted through letters. But she found it difficult to read and write letters as she was illiterate. Later, Rashid's mother came to her house and took their baby to Rashid's house and at last Khan decided to help her remarry Rashid. But when she consulted about this with the chief authority figure in their community, there is some procedure to be followed before remarrying. So for that, she needs to get married to another man and spend a night with him and can get the talaq the next day, but needs to live with that person if she is pregnant and later can remarry the first husband. But Nadira is not happy with this rule and reluctantly she agreed to marry a person for one day just for the sake of Rashid. But Nadira feels very irritated and uncomfortable spending a night with a stranger. She wanted to avoid that situation. So she went outside the riverside of Chandragiri river and after spending some time thinking about her husband and child, she can't spend the night with another man and jumped into the river, thus escaping from the harsh realities of life. Let us dive into the storyline of Breaking Ties. Muhammad Khan was 28 years old when he married Fatima. Fatima was barely 11 years old. He had started to cast evil eyes on other women of the village and that is why his father agrees to marry him. In the beginning of the novel, we come across the qualities they are looking for in the bride. Any girl wouldn't do. Her lineage was important. Equality, the money and prosperity that would come with her. When all these expectations were met, did it matter how old the girl was? The elders of both the families united in arranging the marriage. How could one say that the girl was too young? The elders reasoned thus. Is she going to remain that age forever? Won't she grow up in a year or two? It's always good to marry a young girl because when the man grows old and is bedridden, the woman will still have the strength to nurse him. To this young Fatima, marriage was all about a doll's play. Just like wearing good clothes, putting on some makeup, where all the relatives come, she would eat some good food, that's it. But she realizes the harsh reality what a marriage is on her first wedding night. To Muhammad Khan, his wife was just a piece of flesh on whom he could satisfy his physical needs. He was very cruel and violent. By the time he was done, she had died a thousand deaths. Through the relationship of Muhammad Khan and Fatima, Sarah Abu Bakr has brought out the concept of marital rape and domestic violence. Muhammad Khan used to keep a cane inside his room with which he used to hit his wife in front of people and in solitude as well. They were blessed with two daughters, Jamila and Nadira. When Nadira grew old, she was married to Rashid. The author has given a beautiful contrasting view of how a wedding can be how the relationship of Fatima and Muhammad Khan was and how the relationship of Nadira and uh, Rashid is. Fatima experienced an assault on her body, but Nadira experienced joy. Fatima experienced beatings and violence. Nadira experienced happiness. Fatima had a very cruel husband. Nadira had a kind-hearted person. Fatima had no one else by her side in her times of difficulties. Nadira had her mother-in-law who was like her own mother. Rashid and Nadira are blessed with a child. Muhammad Khan decides to marry his younger daughter and to bear the expenses of which he wanted money. He goes to Rashid to borrow some money, but Rashid did not have enough money to give. He gets frustrated. 
Muhammad Khan feels that he was his ego was hurt and out of this frustration to take a revenge what he does is without informing Rashid he takes Nadira back home Let me give you a geographical visualization of the locations mentioned in the novel Imagine a river flowing by on one side of the river is the place called Kiliyaru where Muhammad Khan's house was situated where Nadira, Jamila, Fatima stayed. On the other side of the river was Bagodu and a couple of miles from Bagodu was Kavali home where Rashid stayed. The river creates a border not just between two places but between two families, two hearts, two relationships and two emotions. Nadira was broken from within. She spent her time rolling bidis. Jamila was married and Nadira's jewellery was sold off without her permission to facilitate the expenses of marriage. Paru, the fisherwoman, gets a letter from Rashid to Nadira. And this incident uh, depicts the importance of literacy. There were days when Rashid used to teach Nadira how to read and write. When Rashid brought slate and stationery items, Nadira smiled and asked him, Are there any school-going children here? Rashid replied, Who said there aren't? The child who should have gone to school has strayed into my house. The next day, she could have run away along with Paru. Rashid was waiting across the river in a taxi. She doesn't agree to disobey her father and requests Rashid to make peace with him. Her mother-in-law, Aminama, visits Muhammad Khan's home and takes away the child without informing or consenting from Nadira. Since Nadira was in her father's home, Fatima and Nadira were disheartened by this incident. The volcano in each heart exploded and both were scalded by the lava. And do you know what was Muhammad Khan's reply to the child being taken away? Who cares? Why do we need his baby? If he gives talaq, I'll arrange another nikha. Since Nadiga was breastfeeding the child, she starts feeling sick. In a few days, her physical problem was cured. Her breast milk dried up and the pain decreased. As there was no cure for the problem of the heart, it persisted. Marriage Proposal to Nadiga New house Salim is a rich merchant. He shows keen interest in marrying Nadira. Though he is married and he has a lot of kids, he wants to marry a young girl. That is when Muhammad Khan plots to divorce Nadira from Rashid. He travels to Rashid's place and fools him saying that Nadira asked for a divorce. Raised by this fact that Nadira, his own love, asked for a divorce, Rashid gets angry and in a moment of anger he pronounces talaq 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 Muhammad Khan returns home and when Fatima asks what happened he says <laughs> nothing really Rashid has given talaq to Nadira after a couple of days of the divorce Muhammad Khan asks Nadira to marry Salim and for the very first time Nadira shouts Abba don't forget that I lived like a queen in Kavali also. You married me off once and that will do. If you try again, I'll kill myself by jumping into the Chandragiri. That was for the very first time Nadira showed resistance. Nadira showed revolt. Remember Paru, the fisherwoman? Sailing through the river of Chandragiri, she carries messages from and to Rashid and Nadira. The misconceptions are cleared when she conveys the message that Nadira had never ever asked for talaq and her father had lied to Rashid. Eventually, Muhammad Khan's health starts to deteriorate and he started to realize his mistake. And to come out of the guilt, he thinks of remarrying Nadira to Rashid. But this reuniting required to go through a stringent tradition. But this wasn't easy. In order to get remarried to her own husband, Nadira had to get divorced from a stranger. She had to get married to someone else. She had to get divorced and then she could get married to her ex-husband. After a roller coaster of thoughts and assurance by Rashid and Aminama, 
she agrees. Nadira agrees to marry an anonymous person. She doesn't even know who that person is. She just wants to do it for the sake of getting reunited with Rashid, her love. On the day of wedding, Nadira felt disgusted and humiliated. She did not want it to surrender herself to a stranger. She wanted to break away from these traditions. She felt bad. She felt the overflow of melancholy, a sadness inside her. On the day of her second wedding, Nadira could neither accept the pain of humiliation nor reject it. That's why she drowns herself. Thinking of Rashid, these were her last words. The faces of Rashid and Papu came floating across the surface of the lake. If Allah grants, we will meet on the day of judgment. With these words, she plunged into the lake. For a brief moment, the serene surface of the lake broke into a furious pattern of ripples and then grew calm again. Though the tranquil water was disturbed, throwing up a lot of mud, soon it all settled beneath the blue waters, once again leaving the surface clear. The clouds darkened again and the rains started to come down in a torrent. Nadira is the symbolic representation of every woman who faced those atrocities. Fatima is the representation of every woman who faces violence, who faces domestic violence. Through her characters, Sarah Abu Bakr has brought out the harsh realities of this society. People do not have proper knowledge of their own religious teachings. Girls are not allowed to read. Do you know what was the very first word revealed in Quran? Ikhra. Read. Ikhra bismi rabbika lazi khalak, read in the name of your Lord. Females are treated as another, daughters aren't valued. But do you know what did Prophet Muhammad say? The best gift from a father to his child is education and upbringing. Lucky is a person whose first child is a daughter. And talaq, divorce. Divorce is supposed to be a relief from painful and torturous relationships. And uttering talaq, talaq, talaq three times doesn't break ties. There is a long process for it. After saying talaq for the first time, the couple has to stay under the same roof. After saying talaq for the second time, the couple yet again has to stay under the same roof. If they want to mould their relationship, if they forgive each other, if the misconceptions are cleared, then they can reunite. But our society has narrowed down these teachings to its self-pleasing requirements. Yet another thing that we need to ponder upon throughout the story is the idea of miscommunication or not communicating. Nadira and Rashid never communicated. Whatever others told, they tend to believe it. If they had communicated initially, the problems wouldn't arise. Though the novel was written in the year 1981, the evils are still prevalent in the society. It is through knowledge, awareness and resistance can these evils be removed. It is you who has to bring the change. It is me who has to bring the change. And with our little efforts, the breaking ties can be strengthened again. Until next time, keep smiling, keep learning.